Hello, my name is Ryan Fitzsimmons, and I'm proposing that Monroe Community College should implement a recertification program for all of their professors. A little bit of background about myself. I am a current student at Monroe Community College, uh, which gives me kind of a first-hand representation of the student body as far as this issue goes. Um, I can adequately judge the quality of the professors uh, based on the fact that I've had multiple different professors, and if the professors aren't meeting the requirements that they're withheld to meet, the students will not be satisfied and they will no longer attend the school. The problem at hand is that there's no system to rate teachers. There's nothing to justify whether they are practicing proper teaching manners. Um, actually, 64% of students continue on to their second year. That's not a very high percentage. That could be based on the fact that there is no rating process for the teachers uh, because there's nothing to justify whether a teacher is doing a good job or not. Students are like customers in a way. If a customer likes a product at a grocery store, they're going to tell their friend. Their friend is then going to go try to do the same product at the same grocery store. They're going to tell a friend, and it's kind of like a word-of-mouth advertising spread. Um, it's similar at the college. If a student has a great experience at the college, they're going to tell a friend who's going to tell a friend, so on and so forth. So something like this, proposing the fact that there should be a rating process for professors, will definitely create a very good word-of-mouth spread, and it will attract more students to the school. And it will also make students that are currently attending school at MCC a lot more satisfied. And it will also make MCC stand out from other schools, which is definitely a bonus because if the name's getting spread that they're a great school, it's going to attract more people to come there. Um, and this presents the main goal of a better reputation for MCC. Current students will also be happier, and the school's financial standpoint will be outstanding. Because if more students come, again, because it's like a business, they will have more money. My official proposal is that Monroe Community College implement a full recertification board. Um, this recertification board will strictly focus on providing the students with the best possible education that they can receive at the school. Uh, there's kind of four main bullet points that go along with this proposal um, and go along with the recertification board. The first thing that they would focus on is the, each professor's teaching techniques and practices. Um, this would be done by the professor or the professors being rated on how they're conveying their message to the class. Are they simply just reading off of a PowerPoint or just reading out of a textbook? Or are they actually going outside of the box and teaching them in methods that will actually make the information stick to the student? Because um, that's very important and I think that's something that's lacking in a lot of professors. They just go in there, they read the same things that a student could read off of a PowerPoint or the same thing the student could read out of the book and that's why the students aren't being as successful as they possibly could be. Um, the second thing is the knowledge of the subject they are teaching. I think it's much too often at the school that professors are kind of thrown into a class, uh, whether it be a lack of staffing or just the fact that a professor has to take time off, whatever the, whatever the fact may be. Teachers are thrown into courses much too frequently, and they're not really familiar with them. Um, for example, you could have a business teacher that would normally teach business law thrown into an intro to business class. That's not what they specialize in. They have a background in it, but they're not used to teaching that class. What this does to students sometimes is it creates the fact that they have a teacher that's not really interested in that exact subject, and they're also not used to teaching it. So the students sometimes don't get the benefit of having a teacher that's really excited about teaching that subject. And what tends to happen is that professor may just read out of a book or read off a PowerPoint slide, and then the students get a bad experience. I and mean, that's kind of like a snowball effect, because that positive word of mouth spread is now turning into a negative spread, and it's also making students not happy. Um, this could be simply fixed just by assessing things like this. The board could go from classroom to classroom and randomly sit in to see how these teachers are speaking and to test their knowledge by watching what they're teaching. Something like that could be monitored. Um, also, what would be implemented is a test. Each teacher would have to take a test based on their specific area. Um, that kind of tests the knowledge because it's also very common that things change. Technology changes, new advancements change, so the professors need to be keeping up on that. Um, somebody that may be too, for example, the tenure point, um, they may be too comfortable or they've been there for a while, they're kind of just there to collect their paycheck. And that's not fair to the students who are paying money to go to learn from these professors. Um, so that test, testing their knowledge to make sure they're keeping up on everything, and also that they're in the right teaching aspect, is definitely very crucial. The next thing is student opinions. At the end of each semester, every student fills out surveys that kind of ask them about their teachers. Uh, and ask them, you know, do they use materials that adequately teach the subject? Do they use good teaching methods? So on and so forth. I feel like those aren't really being used very well. 
um, because I've had, in my experience, professors that don't do the greatest job teaching. Um, and the whole class has been conveying that message through the survey. Uh, but you still see that semester coming back, or excuse me, that professor coming back every single semester. So obviously it shows that the surveys aren't very, really being looked at. Um, also going along with that is the testing results and pass-fail ratio. Generally, if a student, a whole student body or a whole class is rating the professor negatively, that professor probably didn't do a very good job teaching them, and in turn, they probably didn't get very good grades. Those two kind of go hand in hand in that matter because it has to be looked at, and I feel like it's not. You have to look at the fact that the students didn't like the professor and all the students got bad grades. Obviously something's going on. If you combine those with how well the teacher knows the subject that they're teaching, as well as what techniques they're using, if they're just reading out of a book or off of a PowerPoint, combine all those, that's how you can test to see if a professor is good or not. Um, and kind of a nice quote I found actually is, the goal of education is the advancement of knowledge and the dissemination of truth. Um, John F. Kennedy actually said that. And I think that applies to this directly because the teacher's goal, or rather the student's goal, is to be educated. Um, and they have, to, they have to advance their knowledge. And if the professors aren't doing a good job at this, it's obviously not going to happen. Next is the plan. Uh, you have to have a, a good plan set in. If you don't have a plan, it's going to kind of crumble. Uh, my plan for the recertification board would be, first, begin figuring exactly how many employees you would need to come up with the board. This would be combining you know, one person in each specific category, so for example, business, economics, mathematics, physics, etc. Um, the second step in the plan would be to announce the positions that the college will be hiring for. Um, so now once that you have the actual people that you would need and you have figured out what you need, you can now put it out there that you're going to be hiring for them, um, which leads to the next one where you would schedule and conduct, conduct interviews. Um, this is a very important stage because you have to find the right people. If you have the same professors that are applying for these positions that are the ones that are teaching poorly, um, you have to kind of weed that out. The next one would be pick the staff. After the interviews, of course, you have to pick the staff. Uh, the fifth step would be, among the staff, you want to come up with an exact day-to-day -day structure that they have to follow. Um, so everything that they do from the time they come into work to the time they leave, and exactly how they're assessing the teachers. Um, you don't want any confusion in this because you want it to be a very precise system. The final step would be announce detailed information to both the college and the public. Uh, this is very important because this is kind of what puts MCC in the positive public limelight. Um, it's going out there showing that the school is very hardly trying to better their students' education uh, by simply just making the professors the best that they can possibly be and ensuring that the classroom setting is as ideal as possible. The next thing would be the schedule. This is basically taking the plan and putting times along with it. Uh, again, the first part of the plan was to begin figuring the exact amount of employees you would need. And this process would start in the summer of 2012. Um, after that, in the fall of 2012, you would announce the positions to the college. This would allow people to start applying for the job again. Um, and then in spring 2013, which gives it the perfect amount of time, you would schedule and conduct interviews with, for the available positions. And this would go all the way through the summer semester um, and then in the summer of 2013, that's when the board would pick the staff. Um, after that, fall 2013, among the staff, they would begin to develop the day-to-day -day progress of the board. Um, they would figure out exactly what the board is going to be doing from the time they come in, again, until the time they leave. Um, and then this follows up with the fall 2014, which is when the board would be in full effect and they would do their everyday duties. The staffing for the board, it can be combined of current MCC staff members as well as anybody in the public. Um, that meets the qualifications. Outside applicants, perfectly fine. Um, it would be comprised of about 30 to 40 employees, uh, and it would have everything from the normal hierarchy that you would have in a business, being manager, assistant manager, supervisor, and then also, of course, it would have at least one person specified to each discipline in school. So, again, the examples could be business, mathematics, physics, etc. The budget for it. The main way that we would pay for this would be to raise the students' tuition. Um, given that there is 18,000 approximate students at MCC, it wouldn't be a huge raise in tuition. Um, even if each student's tuition was raised, say, $100, that would suffice to support and to pay every member on the board. Um, again, this is something that's positively affecting students, so I don't think that students would necessarily be upset with their tuition being raised if they're guaranteed better professors. 
also because MCC would be trying to better themselves and they would be trying to make themselves a better college, uh, there's a possibility for more governmental aid. Um, this will again give more money to the school to supply for the recertification board and that might even be able to cut down how much they would have to raise each student's tuition. Um, finally, it's very important to me that I think this professor should have to be recertified. Um, they should both be observed and have to take a test that proves that they should be teaching. Um, if accepted, the school can be significantly improved. Recertify your recertification. Any questions? Why will it take until 2014 for the recertification board to start up? Uh, I think that would give ample time for the school to make sure they cross all their T's and dotted all their I's. I don't want to rush the process because I want to make sure everything's set in stone perfectly. Anything else? Has the recertification board been tried at any other school? Um, Leslie University actually did something very similar uh, and it actually brought them up in the public eye in a very positive manner and it also helped their students to raise the overall GPA of the college as a matter of fact. Anything else? No. Alright, thank you very much.